on three. Tell everybody, happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Amen. We do pray special blessings, and we do, we do that. It's fun to recognize, but sincerely and honestly, uh, it is a special day. We appreciate the opportunity to, to recognize people on their birthday. That, that means a whole lot, all right? Rick at First Peter. <clears throat> Chapter 2, verse 29. Let's read together. I did say 1 Peter, right? I, I know. Y'all, y'all, y'all pray for me. I know. 1 Peter, chapter 2. Because we're going to 9. I tell you. They would just listen. Praise the Lord. Seriously, 1 Peter, chapter 2. Verse 9, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You once were not a people, but now you are God's people. And once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Can I hear an amen? amen? Woo! Praise God. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was seeking deep in sin in the miry clay. And our precious Heavenly Father grabs us and lifts us out of the miry clay and sets our feet on a solid rock. Thank God we're the redeemed of the Lord. Amen? I want to talk this morning about the church. And I believe the church that Jesus died for is the church that we need to live for. A few Sundays ago, we started the year off, came to this altar, and we said, Lord, we are yours. Nothing's more important to me than knowing, loving you, and serving, following you. And we came to this altar. Let's start the year off right. And let's rededicate our lives or or consecrate ourselves this first Sunday of the year. Nothing's more important than you giving yourself wholly and completely to Jesus Christ. How you feeling, Gloria? You got a hairdo? Well, I looked over and saw that pretty girl. All right, let's go ahead and preach. That's glory. Anyway, okay. Sorry about that. So you got me distracted. It looks nice. Yeah, we give our life to God and we dedicate, we start things off right. But right up with that, listen to me, if your love for Jesus has got to transfer to your love for His church, it is so, I believe, impossible to, to love God and say you love God and not Love his church, because the church is the body of Christ. And I believe just, you can't separate it. And I've heard people, I know you have too, well, I really don't need a church. I really love the Lord, but the church just isn't for me. You cannot read the New Testament and believe and see what Jesus did for the church. Bought it with his precious blood. It, and, and as we read, let's look together in Acts chapter 2. It gets, I get excited when I, when I read about that church. When I look at it and I see the church in front of me. Not just in this congregation, but I'm talking about the church. The body of Christ. Some of them are meeting at First Baptist today. Amen? Some of the church is meeting at First Methodist Church. Some of the church is meeting at the Presbyterian Church. And, and, and I'm not leaving anybody out on purpose, but I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> but the point is, the church, the body of Christ, and I believe God wants us to fall in love with His church and with His body. We need each other. And what God has in store for us to do in our lives, in our communities, in our families, it takes the church. It's God's design. It's God's purpose. It's God's ideal. To say, I don't need the church. Really, to say, Jesus, I don't need what you died for. 
I know he died to forgive us of our sins, and he, he died for our, our salvation, but the Bible says he gave himself for the church. He loved the church and gave himself for it. Yes, he gave it for your sin, but Ephesians 5 says he loved the church. By the way, husbands, he's talking to us, wasn't he? Love your wives. Just thought I'd point that out there, you know. Didn't, I know y'all wanted me to do that. I know your wives wanted me to do that. <laughs> but, but, but love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself. And I believe the church that Jesus died for and gave his life for ought to be of primary importance in my life. We're going to talk about that today. I'm excited about the church. You're excited about the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, say, uh, I should have went to bed earlier last night. Acts chapter 2. Look with me. Verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. Verse 43. And all came upon every soul. Well, now that'll preach. Amen. Let's do it. All came upon respect. I mean, oh, the presence of the Lord demands our respect. When God is, when we get to the place where we stand in awe of Him. Hmm. And we realize just how great He is. And we realize just how small we are compared to Him. I know we're significant to Him and in His eyes, but, but we didn't get to see God in all of His glory. Hmm. Puts us in our place, doesn't it? Let's read in verse 44, or 43. All came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day all those who were being saved. Thank God for the church, the witnesses. The gospel is being declared. Needs are being met. The lost are being saved. The church is being multiplied and unified. And God is being glorified. I want to be a part of that. Amen. I want to be a part of seeing the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified. His church built. And he's told us, he said, I'm building my church. Woo! And he's invited us to come along. In fact, let me say, he's depending on us. He really is. Now, God could do it other ways, but He has chosen us. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And I'm telling you, church, as we bind ourselves together and become of one mind and one spirit and one accord and in unity and the church is multiplied, we want God to be glorified. We don't want to grow for the sake of growth. We don't want to grow because we got more people. We want to grow because the kingdom is growing. And we have to be kingdom-minded and have a kingdom perspective. That's why it's so important to love the church because the church is about expanding the, 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 the kingdom of God. And that's committed to Christ, being devoted to Jesus, surrendered to Jesus, being a follower of Jesus, being a friend of Jesus. That's what the church is all about. As we read in 1 Peter, we are His possession. He purchased it. I think I got some notes here. I'm by his own blood. That in itself right there tells you how valuable the church is to the Lord. Purchased it, not with the blood of lambs and goats and bulls, but with his precious blood. He purchased it. He's preparing the church. The Lord needs to prepare our computer. Actually, the Lord needs to repair our computer. That's okay, brother. 
He's purchased it. He is preparing it. Thank God he's going to present it. Ephesians 5, 27 tells us as a glorious church, presented without spot or without wrinkle. How many of you want to be a part of what God is doing? A church, it's not just a social club. It's not a civic club. It's not an encounter club. It's not just a place where we meet on Sunday morning. The church is people. And God is all about people. It's a, it's a body. I like the word community. In our vision as a church, a community of Christians. Not just an assembly, not just a group, but a community. That means something. A community. Uh, like Sister Deb and I live out in the community. I don't know what we call that, but it's a community. Amen? Hey, we're getting some new neighbors too, by the way. Amen. I better look, go on from there. <laughs> But, it, but it's special when we commune with each other and we fellowship with each other and we live together and in harmony and have things in common. You see, it's, it's more than just a group of people, more than an assembly. And if we rightly understand, if we comprehend the church's value, the price that was paid for it, the purpose that God has for it, for our petty divisions... I think we'd be a little bit more focused on what God is all about and what He wants to do. Not too concerned about what color the carpet is and, and these other things that tend to get us off focus. Amen? Remember one time we, when we were remodeling that uh, I thought this carpet was pretty. You know, had some ladies picked it out and I thought it was pretty. Well, one lady got upset. I mean, no offense. I mean, you know, we love her. And she loves us, but. Can you imagine letting the color of a carpet in the church be an issue? Frivolous. Thank you, community there. Oh, we've got some things to do. We've got serious business to do. And when we understand that, boy, we fall to our knees with gratitude. We'll stand in awe of God. Look what the Lord has done. Look at my people. Look at my family. Look at my brothers and sisters. Look at the gifts. Look at the talents. Look what God is putting together. He, he sets each one in there. And over the next, of course, of the next uh, today and the next couple of Sundays, we're going to talk about the body. We're going to talk about the importance of the team. How I many watched the football game last night? Green Bay and... And the Cardinals. Boy, wasn't that a good game? Mm. Can you imagine the... Did you, you didn't watch it all? Oh. You and Elizabeth, y'all just missed out on the best part. Now, Elizabeth always goes to bed. Well, she goes to bed early anyway, but, man, it's football games. It may be 20 to nothing. Ah, oh, they ain't playing no good now. Don't ever give up. Yeah, I don't want to argue with that. But anyway... Loving Jesus and not loving the church is like, I'm a great football player, and I'm going to play for football, but I'm not going to join a team. I, I just don't like teams, you know. Uh, but I'm a good, I can run the ball, I can block, I'm, a, I'm an excellent, I've got skills and talents. But, you know, I just don't want to, you know, forget the team. I really don't need the team. I'm, I'm just here to tell you, he's not going to accomplish very much. Now, listen, when I say this, God needs you. I mean, I, 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 he's God and he wouldn't have to need us, but it just in his scheme, he has planned to use you. That's why he saved you. That's why he redeemed you. That's why he anointed you. He didn't anoint you for no other reason but to be a part in advancing the kingdom of God. And he's endowed us with gifts. That's what grace is. That's what charisma is. That's what charismatic is. It's that you have gifts you have anointings. You have enablement. And the sole purpose of it is to advance his kingdom. Amen. Oh, I want to scream and shout and get excited. Amen. When I think about the potential, when I look out here and I see there's gold in them there pews. It really is. There's value. 
I love the scripture there in, in, in 1 Peter 2, 29. No, it's not. I'm just kidding. I know. But the, the, the King James uses peculiar. And, and Jim, I like to use that because looking around, I, you know, there's some peculiar people. Y'all are looking at one, aren't you? Yeah, I know what you're saying. But, but that literally means, if you, in the Greek, you take a circle and draw a circle, put a dot in the middle of it, that's you. Surrounded by God. Possessed by God. You. And the, 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 this translation of, yeah. Whatever. ESV. <laughs> hey, visitors, it's normally not like this. I'll come back. No, I'm kidding. But anyway, the SV kind of spells it out a little bit. But I love it because it says it means that you are God's very own prized private possession. If we get a hold of that, we'll stand in awe of God. The fact that He chose me, the fact that He redeemed me, first of all, whoo, what love of the Father has shown to us. Translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. And it said here, to show forth the praises of him, hallelujah, who's done that. And we are his very own prized, private, precious possession. And he, when he links us together with others and, and makes up the team that he, that he has, that's when things get done. That's why it happened in Acts chapter 2 that we read about. All of that going on is because they valued the church. Hey, you got some more slides over there. Thank you there, Caleb. You're a good man. Well, maybe not. Nice try, brother. And, and then we are his body. And I just want to emphasize today that that body that he purchased, that he is preparing, that he's going to present, demands, I believe, it's a strong word, but I believe it demands, certainly deserves, and I believe it demands our devotion. Let's nice try again, brother. That's cool. That's cool. But, but I want to, that word, con, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That word steadfastly means constant. They, they adhered to these things that they did as a community. It wasn't just Flipping, it wasn't if it was convenient. It, it wasn't if, if I feel good. It, it, it wasn't, well, if the fish are not biting that weekend. And I do want to say this. Being committed, devoted, and, and loving the church doesn't mean that you have to be here every Sunday. What did you say? Okay, I don't know if that's a good... No, it really is. Pretty good. Huh? But, but seriously, it doesn't mean that, that, that out of a duty... Okay, and out of a legalistic attitude, I, I can't never miss a Sunday. That's not true. You can miss one a year. <laughs> uh, I'm talking about being faithful. And there are good reasons not to be at this church. That's a Sunday on Sunday morning. And families, and we talked about that, our values as a church at our, our leadership uh, retreat this weekend. That's one reason we don't have service on Sunday night. We have grace team meetings, second and fourth Sunday night. I want time for the family. We believe family is important. Therefore, we set aside time to help that happen. Okay? Because family is a value. It's a non-negotiable. Okay? It's even, even as a pastor. I mean, if we don't take care of our family, you know, and, and we can be all about the church and, and commit it, and you can neglect Important things, one being your family. Amen? And, and, and be so busy, you know, in the, the, the works. And, and we, in fact, you can do all that church business and not even love God. Amen? And then you do it just out of a sense of devotion and, and duty and, 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 and legalistic. And your relationship with, with the Lord Jesus, the church, uh, with, with Him, and lose your first love and just going about doing things. 
Happens in a marriage if you're not careful. That's why Elizabeth reminds me frequently. This workaholic, would you please stop what you're doing? I'm washing dishes, baby. I'm loving you. I'm vacuuming the floors. I'm doing, look what all that I'm doing. Come home every day. Washing the dishes. And I'm doing this, I'm doing this. She says, that's not really, it's, and she appreciates that thing, but for me to really communicate that I love her, it's somewhere in home. Oh, come and hold me. Just sit there, just, just five minutes. Just, just give me five minutes. Well, it's amazing what five minutes will do, Donnie. Amen. I got 20 minutes to do even better. But... Yeah, what I'm talking about. But that's what Jesus, he, he, you know, come away. And, and we, we see the story of Mary and, and Martha there. And Martha was cumbered about with much serving. Being committed to the church is not about being cumbered about with much serving. It's about loving Jesus with all your heart. About being faithful to the church. About being committed to the church. It's about being on the team. It's about, hey, I can, I've got a contribution to make. God's given me these talents and this gifts. And I can, I, I can be a part of the team. That's what it's about. But first and foremost, like I said earlier, it's, co- it's a commitment to Jesus Christ. Don't come serve the church if you're not committed to Jesus. Amen? Get things right with God. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then you'll be doing that service out of love for Him. And you'll enjoy it. And then you won't be mad at me for doing it. Oh, move it Nobody mad at me, huh? I don't think. Whoa! Glory to God. All right. I know it's... Don't y'all, don't y'all like me to see turn pages and not say nothing? Oh, amen at the wrong places, man. Mm. We read about in Acts chapter 15 how Paul went about in, in confirming the churches and how the churches were established. I want to emphasize, number one, your relationship with Jesus, number one. Get it right. Get it right. The love, that first love that we, we talk about. Man, I'm just so in love with Jesus. Oh, he's the lover of my soul, and, and I can't stand to be away from him and, and to spend time with him and to sit at his feet. Yes, and then go about serving him, doing what he wants you to do as part of the team, loving the church. I want to do something this morning and Son-in-law and others preached already, and I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so I thank God that everybody here will be back next Sunday so that we can finish that. Amen? And if you promise to be back, I'll quit. Amen. But there, I, honestly, I'm, I'm jokingly, but... Mm. Number one, I've had such a passion for the Lord. And God has such a, a passion and a compassion for the work of the Lord. Amen. To do in this community and in the community that you live in. And I think. Wow, when Jesus, like he looked on the multitudes and he wept. He had compassion on them. Look at all the needs. Y'all ever do that? Just think, oh, and I pray that will break your heart. A message God is on my heart I want to preach is 15 of them. Let's do them all today. You know. But when Nehemiah, he saw the condition of the city and the walls and, and he, he wept and he prayed, and he cried, he, he fasted, he broke his heart. 
And I pray that your heart will be absolutely broken for the things of God. For the needs that are there. Because I believe this. You're not going to do much about anything if you're not broken over it. I'm not saying you won't have any concern and you may want to do something, but I believe God wants to break our heart for what breaks His. And out of that brokenness, you know, we, 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 we act. I don't mean broken. I mean, God wants to make us whole, but I mean, I really believe He wants our heart when we see people that are lost and going to hell. We need to remember that, by the way. You know, I saw a lady in the store yesterday. She said, I, I, I don't go to any church. And uh, she said, I'm thinking about coming to hear you. And I said, well, that would be good. <laughs> you know? I think so. But anyway, she said, do you preach about hell and sin? Yeah, I preach that. I don't want to go there. No. <laughs> but, but we do need to preach that. Amen? And call sin what it is. I'm not afraid of offending anybody when I use the word sin. You know, I don't condemn anybody. Jesus said, I came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But we cannot refrain, amen, because Jesus asked us to repent of our sin. And in and, and many churches, and I understand that, and I know where she was coming from, and trying to be people pleasers and, and trying to, to not run anybody off, don't mention sin. I want God to convict me of my sin. Amen. And I want people in my life that say, hey, what about this? And what about that? And to hold me accountable. You know, because God's not condemning us. God, uh, let me make it very, very clear. I mean, God's not sitting up there with a hammer. And, and, and in fact, he loves you. He loves, you know, amen, all of us sinners. Amen. If you're a sinner loved by God, say amen. amen. If you didn't answer, you got problems. <laughs> you really put it together. What was that? Convictions of our sin. And, and we need to be broken about the things that, that breaks God's heart. But here's the thing about it. Nothing, not much going to get done if we don't do it together. Amen. We've got to love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we have to love others. I'm, aren't you glad God made it simple? Two commandments. We talked about our values. This. We talked about things, and, and uh, our sign says, a loving people serving a loving God. And that really does sum it up. You know, we talked about our need, our, our, our value, grace, and how important that is, and how family is, how important integrity is, how important the Word of God is. And we come up with a list of about 20 of those things that, that we value, that we're not going to, that are, that are, you know, we can't, we're not going to compromise on that. Amen. But it really all sums up, and just like Jesus summed up all the laws, two commandments, love God, love people. And I, the church needs every one of you to do that, to do your part, so that we can advance his kingdom. Amen. I, uh, I'm not much on doing kind of business like things in church because I'm such a people person. I like, but I, I want y'all to, to fill this out. You know, we want to do a really good job of helping take care of people. You know, uh, for example, I, we, we want to know when you're not at church. Not so we can call you and act like a, a truant officer. Why wouldn't you here? No, something might, you might, you might have a need. Okay? And so we're redoing our directory and I would love to have everybody's updated information. You know, why? So we can minister. I, I just really believe. We're here for no other reason than to minister to each other and minister to, to others in need. Amen? And so sometimes paperwork and business is necessary. And uh, I want everybody to take one of these. This is not necessarily uh, joining the church, necessarily. And uh, who, who doesn't have one? We had these last week. Okay. Would you maybe give some to somebody else? And, and uh, let me have one. Just so I can re reference it. Um, now, I believe some, some need it over here. I believe 
it's important. Church membership is important. We used to not put hardly, you know, I believe wrongfully, almost de-emphasized it, and I believe that's, that's not good. Because, you know, what you love, you're, you're going to commit to. Amen? And if you're really on that team, you're going to commit to it. Boy, I saw that player last night, number 11, I don't remember his name. You can tell how much football I watch. Fitzgerald, boy, he was committed, wasn't he? He never gave up. And because, listen to me, it, it so impressed me. Because of, because the, the whole team was committed. But you ask any of the commentators, they're like, boy, he took the game, control of that game. And he did things. Boy, he's talented, but I guarantee you, talent isn't going to get you where you need to be. Talent alone is not good enough. It takes your giftedness, but also takes the person beside you. See, a truth I want you to hear, you need each other. You know, my thumb needs my pointing finger. It's every member of my body is dependent. They're interdependent. I'm not dependent on anybody, but we are interdependent. You understand what I mean? Our dependence is on God. He's our sufficiency, and we are sufficient in him, but he has linked us together and put us together in such a way that I don't have everything necessary to do his work. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll look at it later. Amen? So I need that. Just look at the person next to you and say, I sure do need you. Mm -hmm. I need you. Ed, did you get that done over there, bud? All right, he's needed her for 50. Fifteen and a half. Boy, he's got the half down on it. <laughs> Amen. But this, uh, uh, thank you for doing this. We, here's some pens. And I'm just a rambling. I'm sorry. Who needs a pen? What would you say, Lily? She's upset because I'm rambling. Would you minister to her, Kathy, and calm her down a little bit? She needs help there. Uh, make sure everybody gets a pen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just dropping everything. Now, let me give you a little explanation on this before I, I turn you loose. Uh, if you look at this side of it on your left-hand side, that's for the, the main person in that household, and that's your house address and uh, physical address, mailing address. Sometimes they're different. And, uh, and then on the back is a place for every individual member of that family because I realize there's different phone numbers, the children got phones, and spouses have different phones. Uh, some of you may have a website, you know, that... One family member has, or our Facebook page, or something like that, and uh, we uh, need all that information as well. Birthday, some people, you know, call. Oh, you didn't, you didn't put my birthday in there, didn't? Where well, we didn't have it, you know? And uh, how do I get it? Well, you fill one of these out. Ah, uh, does anybody else need some more confusion? <laughs> Can I clarify anything? Do you have any questions? And now, if you let me mention church members.